The Bible is wrong, declared Pope John Paul II. Papst Johannes Paul II und die Bibel hat doch nicht recht. And the, Bi the Bible is wrong after all. So he says in Osservatore Romana, which is the official mouthpiece of the Roman Catholic Church, that Darwinism is right and the Bible is wrong. Catholic Church has refuted the literal interpretation of Genesis. Instead, it teaches that Genesis is an allegory. What exactly is allegory? Britannica defines allegory as a symbolic fictional narrative that conveys a meaning not explicitly set forth in the narrative. What else is Genesis, according to Catholic Church? Don't look at Genesis as bad science. That's like looking at The Wasteland as a bad spy novel. It's not a spy novel at all. Genesis is not science at all. So what is it? I would call it um, theology, mysticism, mysticism, mysticism. Genesis is mysticism? Mysticism, according to Britannica, is the practice of religious ecstasies or religious experiences during altered states of consciousness, together with whatever ideologies, ethics, rites, myths, legends, and magic may be related to them. The term mystic is derived from the Greek noun mystes, which originally designated an initiate of a secret cult or mystery religion. If Genesis is myth, then it begs the question, what else could be myth or fictional in the Bible? Who are we, mere mortals, to interject our opinions into holy scriptures and determine what is fictional and what is literal? While we believe that the Bible's authors, who were inspired by the Holy Spirit, employed various literary styles to convey the Word of God enshrined in the Bible, it is important to highlight that the problem at hand is not genre, but the historicity of the events described in the book of Genesis. One such example is Genesis 1's historical or literal six-day creation, which the Catholic Church, once again, dismisses as nonsense. We covered that in this video. See the cart or link in the description if you want to watch that video. By the way, if you're new to our channel, subscribe and enable the bell icon to be notified when we upload new weekly videos. Please like and share our videos with anybody you think needs to know the truth. Unquestionably, to believe in God requires faith, not science. Creation cannot be understood any other way than by believing the revelation of the Creator. If you want to choose Charles Darwin, you can have him. But Charles Darwin is not a hermeneutic to interpret Genesis 1 and 2. Creation, as I said, has no connection to science as we know science. Science as a reality was created by God at the creation. Science is simply the observation of the way things are. And they are the way they are because He created them that way in six days. Somebody says, well, couldn't God have used evolution? That question is intrusive, irritating, and irrelevant. If you want an answer, he did not. He did not. He did not. He made everything in six days. Why are you questioning what God has said? If God came to you and said, I made everything in six days, what would you say to him? Well, now, now listen, God, uh, there are some things you need to know about science. Good science authenticates the creation story. Moreover, to have faith in God means total trust in Him, and to trust God requires total acceptance that His Word is true. When a group decides to label an entire book of the Bible an allegory or fictional, one is left to wonder whether they truly believe in the authority of God's Word. Why do we believe in historical interpretation of Genesis, including a literal six-day creation? For example, this is back during the time of Louis Pasteur, they would take a lump of meat and they are carcass and they would set it down somewhere and in a few days they would see worms and things springing out of the carcass and they said see we watch life form all the time see how these worms came out of that carcass from nowhere new life is constantly forming and Pasteur looked at that and he said no you're not noticing the flies that are landing on it laying eggs he then took the same meat or something and he put it in a vacuum environment and there was nothing. And they realized that, here's a law, all life in the world comes from life. We cannot find a single example anywhere in the observable world where life 
comes from non-life. We are enabled with all of our sophisticated laboratories and equipment to produce life from non-life. And as much as scientists can do now, they are still not able to produce one single cell of life artificially. Now what are the chances that lightning could strike a puddle four billion years ago, pick your date, it doesn't matter, and produce spontaneous cells of life? If it is that simple, why can't we reproduce that scientifically? Why would we teach as fact something we cannot demonstrate scientifically? Isn't that unscientific? Unlike Pope Francis, who said evolution is real and God is no wizard, we believe that God is the master creator. While he is not a wizard, he has the power to speak things into existence. If God can bring a man back to life after he has been dead for four days, which contradicts science, logic, and biology, he can make anything out of nothing in an instant. You can't explain to somebody the science of the resurrection of Lazarus, the science of the bread and the loaves, the science of an axe head that floats, the science of the parting of the Red Sea. It has no scientific explanation. The miracle of creation is just the most massive of all miracles. It is not explicable by any observable, repeatable, fixed laws. So all you're left with is fidelity. A wonderful account in John 9 demonstrates once more that Jesus Christ is the master creator making Genesis stories true rather than mythical. According to Genesis, God formed man from dust. In John 9, Jesus comes across a man who was born blind. This is interesting since this individual most likely lacks an eyeball. Thus, Jesus must make something that is lacking. What exactly did he do? He spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed and came seeing. John 9 verses 6 and 7. What did Jesus say to the Pharisees when they urged him to validate their sinful practice of divorcing their wives for any reason? No, Jesus, being the Creator, pointed the hypocritical Pharisees back to the beginning, the creation of Adam and Eve. Have ye not read? Read what? Read the creation story. That he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. On the sixth day of creation, God created Adam and Eve. As evolution teaches, Adam and Eve did not evolve through time. If you are a Christian, you can either accept what the Bible says without adding your own interpretation, or you may reject the Bible, but not both. God does not tolerate with anyone who tampers with his word. And he says in Revelation 22 verses 18 and 19, If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life. Don't play with God's word. You may believe you can get away with it, but on the day of judgment, you will have to answer for not just perverting the truth of God's word, but also deceiving others. If Genesis is an allegory, as Catholics believe, and the Genesis creation account is a fiction, the Pope and those Catholics who hold to this doctrine will likewise declare the book of Exodus a myth. What can we learn from the actual six-day creation in Exodus 20? The fourth commandment, which is, by the way, the third commandment in the Catholic Church's catechism, since they omitted the third commandment, which forbids the worship or veneration of graven images. Was that done on purpose? Yes, because if the Catholic Church believed in the third commandment of Exodus 20 verses 4 and 5, they would not create statues and graven images of dead people to pray to or venerate. Exodus 20 verse 11 makes a reference to the Genesis six days creation. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. What else does the book of Genesis tell us? The book of Genesis provides a clear narrative of God's creation of Adam and woman. If the stories in Genesis are allegories, we might easily confuse the biblical institution of marriage between a man and a woman. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus, when confronting hypocritical Pharisees, refers back to the creation story. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. 
Mark 10, verse 6. If Genesis is a myth, then the whole foundation of the first institution which God created crumbles. Instead of a man leaving his father and mother, according to Jesus, and joining his wife, he can, as our society is redefining marriage, leave his father and mother and join another man, and vice versa for a woman. Do you see the consequence of messing with the Word of God? But more importantly, when you undermine God's holy word, you open yourself up to errors. The Pope and the Church praises Darwinism, believes in natural selection, rejects divine creation, and refers to creation as heresy and Genesis mysticism. Whose report do you believe? The Pope's? The evolutionists, Darwin's, or God's. As for us, we choose to believe the report of the Lord. Do not be deceived, God will not be mocked. We believe that the universe does not exist as a result of a Big Bang. Neither do we believe in natural selection. Sadly, human beings willfully choose to insert their own ideas and thoughts, and in so doing, become tools that Satan uses to deceive millions. If any group that claims to be a Christian group gets the creation story in Genesis chapter 1 wrong, which is the mark of God's authority on earth as the creator, they will likely get many other important biblical teachings wrong. Apostle Paul warns in Ephesians 5 verse 11 to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. If you are a Christian who has been misled by the ungodly and unbiblical doctrines of Catholicism and other Christian denominations on the creation story or other biblical doctrines, this is God's message to you. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Revelation 18 verses 4 and 5.